know, forgiveness probably is not a term that is used very often in the financial world. If you're a banker, you know, you don't want to get into that too much. But in the faith world and in the Christian world, it's our bread and butter. Forgiveness. In fact, you might say that for Jesus, that was a shtick. For Jesus, he was in a family business called the forgiveness business. You know, right when he began his ministry, he came out wet from the Jordan River after being baptized by John the Baptist. His first words out of his mouth was, repent for the forgiveness of sin. And throughout all the three years of his ministry, he was always showing in action and in words the gift that he was giving to the world. Think about the Last Supper. He lifts the cup up and says, this cup is the new covenant in my blood for the forgiveness of sins. And as he's hanging on the cross, what are his last words for people to hear? Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. For Jesus and his family, they were in the forgiveness business. This month of March, we are marching through the Lord's Prayer, and today we arrive at the fifth petition. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Today's petition, the fifth petition, I would suggest to you is the heart. It's the soul. It's the very center of the Lord's Prayer. It's, it's the lever that moves everything else, before and after, and us as well. And I know that because as Jesus finished teaching the Lord's Prayer, he said, and I've got one last thing to say, a little coda, a little emphasis where he underlined it. I have it right up here. We heard it just this morning. It's verses 14 and 15. Let's, let's read this out loud again. For if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. Jesus, with all the petitions of the Lord's Prayer, has these blessings and blessings that he teaches us how to pray. And then when he says, Amen, he says this. Oh, and by the way, the most important point is forgiveness. And not only forgiveness, but how we echo what Jesus' actions are. You know, it's, uh, there's that saying that it's, it's uh, more blessed to give than receive. I think Jesus' take on that is it's more blessed to forgive than to receive forgiveness. Forgiving is for giving. It's for giving away. I have a feeling that the secret of this forgiveness business is that it's never going to run out. You're never going to say, you know what, I, I, I don't have any more to forgive. Um, Jesus said, how many times? Seventy times seven. Do you remember the story about Jesus? And It's in the Gospel of John, the eighth chapter, where, where Jesus is walking along and he comes to this commotion and, and there's this woman who was supposedly caught in adultery, surrounded by a crowd. They've all got rocks in their hands, and they're ready to stone her. And Jesus walks, sort of gets in between the woman and the crowd, and he says, He who has no sin, throw the first stone. And then as John describes it, the gospel writer, the crowd slowly shuffles away and melts down the street. And it's just Jesus and the woman. Do you know what's interesting about how John describes that event in Jesus' life and ministry? Is that crowd that had all those stones and rocks in their hands, they never dropped them, did they? They, they, they held on to them. They, they walked away, they didn't do anything at that moment, but they held on to their stones of resentment, of accusation, of getting back. My sense is that uh, when we reflect on our lives, if I reflect on my life, I carry a lot of stones. 
I carry a lot of rocks. In a sense, I think human nature is that we either hold a rock or we throw a rock. And Jesus gives us the third way, to drop it, to forgive. This past weekend, we celebrated a funeral here at Prairie Lutheran Church on behalf of Liza Hassler. Many of you know the Hassler family, Pete and Mary, the mom and dad, Joe and Claire, brother and sister. And we set up the, the corner right here of our prayer wall as a, as a chapel, and it was for the immediate family. There were six, and then some of us clergy and staff members. Liza passed away about a week and a half ago on February 28. Liza died of cancer at the age of 20. Can you imagine losing a child? Can you imagine losing a daughter at the age of 20? Liza was an amazing woman, and so at the beginning of the service, we lit those candles there from the Christ candle. And every family member got up and read scripture and, and read a letter or no. It was such a moving, emotional service with tears uh, and laughter. Mom, dad, brother, and sister shared about this light in their life. When she died on Friday, Friday morning and then Saturday, you can imagine what the, what the Hassler house was like. And then on Sunday night, a knock came to the door. And Pete, the dad, opened the door and, and Mary right behind him and then Joe and Claire and they looked out in their front yard and there were hundreds and hundreds of people holding candles in the night. Across their front yard, into the street and up onto the hill, they were surrounded by people that came to say, this light, this Liza, we love and they surrounded the Hassler family. It was as if the, the stars of heaven fell to the ground to say, we want to honor this amazing woman. It turns out that Liza was born with a syndrome called Apert's syndrome. It's, it's sort of, it's a rare disease that, that does not allow a person to develop their muscles like most of us uh, and speak like most of us. She was unable to run and to skip and to talk like the rest of us. And, and yet, and yet. You know, a lot of people would look at Liza and say that she was disabled. You know, she couldn't jump like the kids in her, her early classes of, of, at gym. She couldn't shout and sing and she couldn't call back and forth and so, we might say that she was disabled. But the reason why so many of the neighbors and friends and even strangers, teachers and, and fellow students had those lights and those hundreds of candles outside because they were touched by the love of Liza. Why? Because Liza knew how to drop stones and rocks. You see, Liza had dozens of surgeries in her life to repair some of the, the stuff that was going on in her muscle and her bones and whatnot. And, and whenever those surgeries and the therapies, hours and hours of painful, and she would sometimes get violently sick. And we, she was sitting there, mom and dad or brother and sister would say, are you all right, are you all right? And they were really caring for her. And, and Liza would always say, I'm okay. I'm okay. Liza never held a blame or a grudge. Why God? Why me? And she was always, I'm okay. She was like this light that could not be extinguished. This person that oftentimes when she was out in public and people might look at her and, and they would say awkward things. And she just let it roll off. She didn't let it stay inside. At the end of our funeral service um, on Friday, the family had asked for one last song. 
Liza loved Disney movies. And if you ever went to the Hassler home, there were cutouts from Toy Story 1, Toy Story 2, Toy Story 3, uh, Frozen, you name it. Uh, they were part of Liza's family as well. The last song that the Hasslers asked was Liza's favorite song. It was from Frozen. Elsa, when she sang, let it go. Liza knew how to let it go. She didn't store up in her heart or in her hands or in her body the stones or the rocks that we all do. She just let it go and that was her legacy and that's why so many people who ever met Liza fell in love with her. On the outside, you might say, she doesn't look like me, but on the inside, she had something that we all wanted. Peace, joy, hope, love, and the greatest of all, forgiveness. You know, Jesus, in his ministry, healed so many people who had disabilities. The blind, he gave sight. And those who were lame, he enabled them to walk. And those who had a paralyzed hand, he gave them strength to reach. He did that over and over and over again. But truly, that was the minority of his ministry. You know what the majority of his ministry was? To heal what we think are the able people on the outside. But Jesus looks into our heart and sees our disabilities. Lives that are paralyzed with blame. Lives that are, that are lame with resentment. Lives that are beating barely with a stone heart. And Jesus offered the amazing gift that does heal all of us. All of us who are crippled inside. And that is forgiveness. Forgiveness is hard. Forgiveness is scary. But it's the fulcrum. It's the thing that changes the world and it changes us. This morning, I don't know where you are, but I invite you to think of a rock that you're holding. One of those stones that you've been holding for so long, it's, you've held it in your hands so long, your heart so long, now it's polished, it's shiny. You don't want to let it go because you know you're right and they're wrong. This morning, I invite you to hear again our Lord Jesus and the Lord's Prayer. Forgive me my sins as I forgive those who sin against us. And drop that rock. And you know what's going to happen? That hole that you created in your heart, God's going to fill it with peace, with joy, and love, and healing. And you're going to be different. You're going to be filled, instead of with weighed down with the burdens of guilt and anger, you're going to be elevated and lifted up with the peace of the wings of joy. And you're going to understand exactly what lies anew. Let it go. Life is too short. Let it go and live with Jesus. Amen.